Hi everybody, uh, this video is going to cover the additive principle, which is also called the rule of sum. Uh, the learning goal for this video is that by the end of it, uh, you'll be able to use this principle to solve problems involving mutually and non-mutually exclusive events. Uh, so we're just going to quickly go over uh, what the difference is between and and or. So here's an example about, let's say you're going to go on a trip to Europe or Asia, and we've got three countries in Europe and two in Asia. And um, so if we think about the number of ways that we can go to Europe and Asia, basically we've got three ways, right, to go to Europe, and we have two ways to go to Asia. So using the fundamental counting principle, um, you'd have three times two ways to go to Asia. Um, so that would be six in total. Okay, so like for instance, if I started at France, I can then go to Asia, sorry, China, and then to Pakistan, right? And then the same thing would be if I went from Portugal, I would be able to go to both Asia and Pakistan, right? And then Sweden to China and Pakistan. So anyway, so that's six ways. Now, if you wanted to go to Europe or Asia, well, we've got uh, three countries in Europe and uh, two countries in Asia. So if I want to go to Europe or Asia, I've got five options, right? Which is um, also three plus two. Okay, so there's a, a fundamental difference between and and or. And we typically um, uh, multiply, right? But then if this is or, we're going to typically add. Uh, so let's just uh, do a quick example here. We've got eight people competing in a game or whatever game. And how many ways can the top three or top four standings be arranged? Now, we can either have a top three or a top four uh, standing. Okay? You can't have both. Those are what we call mutually exclusive. So we're going to come up with um, how many ways we can arrange the top three. So we've got eight people. So that means in order to... Um, uh, the number of ways to arrange them would be 8, right? P, 3. Um, so that's the number of ways to arrange the 8 people into the top 3 spots. Now, um, we also, though, want to find out how many ways to arrange these 8 people in 4, right? So we're going to write 8, P, 4. And just like what we did in the beginning, it says here top three or the top four standings. So that means um, this is telling us that we're going to add the two, right? Because we're going to figure out how many there are in the top three, and then also how many there are in the top four uh, arrangements, and then we're going to add them up. All right, so um, 8P3, that's the same thing as right 8 factorial divided by um, 8 minus 3 factorial. And then we're going to add 8p4, which is, again, that's 8 factorial over 8 minus 4 factorial. Um, so let's just do that quick subtraction. So that's 8 factorial over 5 factorial. And then we're going to add 8 factorial over 4 factorial. Um, we do the quick math here. That makes 336 plus... 1,680, add those up, you get 2,016, okay, total ways. Okay. So, um, we're going to use permutations to help us um, uh, calculate the number of arrangements. All right. Here's another example. A school's gay-straight alliance has 15 students on pink shirt day. 11 people in the group remembered to wear pink. Out of the nine boys in the group, five wore pink. So if the GSA posed for photos in groups of three, in how many ways could the photos be all boys or all wearing pink? So the first thing we have to think about is, are these two events here, all boys and wearing pink, mutually exclusive? And of course the answer is no, boys can wear pink. So this is um, non, let's just note this, non-mutually exclusive. Okay. So that means we're going to have to make sure we don't double count. Um, so let's look at, uh, that means we're going to have to use the principle of inclusion and exclusion, right? So let's say um, I want to know the number of arrangements for boys or 
uh, people wearing pink. Okay. So remember, that means we're going to be doing uh, the number of arrangements for boys okay, plus the number of arrangements for pink, right, people wearing pink. But then because these are non-mutually exclusive, we don't want to double count. Uh, so we have to subtract the number of arrangements of uh, boys um, and pink. Okay. So let's just think about this for a second. The number of boys, and in this case, it's the number of arrangements for all uh, for all boys. So we've got here in total nine boys, um, and the photos are only in groups of three. So that means uh, the number of arrangements there would be nine p three. The um, number of arrangements of people wearing pink. So we've got eleven people wearing pink. So it's eleven. P, and then I'm concerned with groups of three. But then I'm subtracting the number of boys and pink arrangements. So we've got five boys, right? Five boys who wear pink. So we're going to do five P uh, three. Okay. All right. So we're going to just quickly do the math here. Nine P three is 504 plus uh, 11p3 is 990, minus 5p3, which is 60. And we subtract, uh, sorry, we add and subtract, we get 1,434 okay, ways. Okay. So again, those that 5p3 here, right, or those 60 arrangements, that's because um, some of these boy, all boys are also all wearing pink, right? Similarly, out of these 990 that are all wearing pink, some of those are all boys as well. So we got to make sure that we don't double count, okay? So that's where this comes in. So if it's non-mutually exclusive, we've got to make sure that we subtract um, uh, the intersection, right, where, where both events happen. All right, so let's just kind of sum up what we've done here, what we've uh, discussed. Uh, for mutually exclusive events, okay, so if one event can happen in M ways and a second one can happen in N ways, then one or the other uh, happening uh, can happen in M plus N ways. All right, so again, or is telling you to add. Now, if it's for non-mutually exclusive events, you've got to make sure that we use this principle of inclusion and exclusion. Okay, so again, that means the number of ways or arrangements of A or B okay, is equal to the number of ways A can happen plus the number of ways B can happen, but then subtract the number of ways that A and B can happen Okay, to prevent double counting. Okay, so why don't you try this example, uh, give it a quick read, pause the video, uh, and then try the question yourself. When you're ready to see the solution, press play and uh, see how you did. Okay, so good luck. All right, hopefully you paused the video and you gave it a try. So here we've got, uh, we're talking about a standard deck of cards. Um, uh, we need to identify that these two events here, face cards and spades, are non-mutually exclusive. So we've got to use that principle of inclusion and exclusion. So the number of arrangements of face cards or spades is equal to the number of arrangements of face cards plus the number of arrangements for spades, but then we have to subtract uh, the arrangements where you have face cards and spades. Okay, I got right on my meme. Okay, well, let's look at the number of ways we can arrange the face cards. Well, we've got 12 face cards in a deck. So let's write 12 P, and we're drawing two cards. So we're going to put two. Now there's um, spades. How many spades are there? 13 spades in a deck. And we're just choosing two of them. And then minus, now how many cards are spades and face cards? Well, there's only three, the jack, queen, and the king of spades. So there's three possible cards, uh, and we're going to arrange them in two. 
All right. Uh, just using uh, either your permutation button on your calculator or using the permutation formula. Um, this first arrangement here, there's 132 ways. Uh, 13 P2 is 156. Whoa, that's messed up. Let's oh, back it up. I can't back it up. I can't back it up. Let's erase. 156 uh, minus 3. All right, we add and subtract. We get 200. And 85 uh, ways. Okay, well, hopefully you got that. Um, I just want to stress that there's um, an easy way to determine the number of outcomes uh, that you want by using this indirect method. So we want to uh, subtract the number of unwanted outcomes from the number of all possible outcomes. So here's an example that uh, we'll go over together. In how many ways can the 13 spades from a deck of cards be arranged without restrictions? So we've got 13 cards. Uh, we want to arrange them and we're going to use all 13, right? So we're going to uh, calculate 13 P13. Of course, that just means 13 factorial. And 13 factorial is 6,227,020,800. All right. So that's the, all the possible outcomes of arranging 13 spades uh, in the row 13. All right. So let's say now we want the king and the queen at either end. So that basically means... Uh, let's say the king is over here, the queen is over at the other end, and we've got all the other cards in the middle. Okay? Now, of course, that means that there are 11 cards in the middle, for, and we're uh, arranging 11 of them, right? all 11 of them. So we're going to do 11 P11 inside, and we've got these two spots for the king and the queen. So... To calculate this, we've got 11p11, okay? but we're going to multiply 2p2 because we've got two cards, right, for two spots. So let's calculate that. Uh, so 11p11 is just 11 factorial right? times 2 factorial. All right, let's get that's going to be a big number, 39 million nine hundred and sixteen thousand eight hundred times two and we're gonna get oh I'm gonna cram it in here seventy nine million eight hundred and thirty three thousand six hundred ways all right now, for part C, um, we're trying to figure out the number of ways to arrange it so that the king and the queen are not at either end. Well, we know how many there are when they're at either end. We can just subtract that from the total uh, to get the number of ways that they're not at either end. Right? So the original number we had, the total number of outcomes, was 6,227,020,800. Uh, and let's subtract that from the number of ways that they are at either end. Right? So that's subtracting 79,833,600. Um, and that'll get us oh, 6,147,187,800 ways. All right. So um, the big ideas here or um, you need to ensure that you understand um, mutually and non-mutually exclusive events, and you're going to have to calculate them accordingly. Hey, make sure that when you're asking, when you're being asked for and and or, that you um, multiply or add, okay, respectively. And also this indirect method where we are subtracting here um, really comes in handy, especially when you're trying to find when events are not happening. Okay, so thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something, and uh, I'll talk to you later.